Hi guys, this is Fernando doing another video for Modern Survivalist. In this case, doing a must watch video. Okay, I don't, I don't care how long this takes, you really have to stay for this one because it's, it's pretty important. Even if you're one of the couple of trolls that I have following me everywhere, I'm posting dislike on every single video that I make as soon as I upload it. Uh, even if you're that guy, just stay tuned because this is pretty important and this may save your life one day. The thing is, three excellent reasons to own body armor and there's videos on body armor I haven't exactly found one that reflects my precise belief and that's fine we all have our different uh, thoughts and such and the thing is you you will find hundreds if not thousands of videos on why to own a firearm why it's important to own a handgun for home defense for without rule of law when everything breaks down and the zombie comes and such but that's that's great that's perfect you, you must have a fireman in your house, right? Now, as soon as someone brings up body armor, people start like, whoa, what, body armor, are you nuts? What kind, of, what kind of crazy are you talking about? And this is, again, something that you see even in, in, the, in the survival forums that should be people that are pretty open-minded and uh, open to uh, reasonable thoughts. Uh, they will think, why body armor? That's like extreme or some people will say yes I have it in case of without rule of law when war starts and the China invades and all that stuff and you will see guys that have several handguns thousands of rounds of ammunition not a single piece of body armor to me that's just crazy insane it's funny how you know a guy that has five different handguns three different rifles doesn't has doesn't have one piece of body armor because he doesn't think it's important enough I mean, if you're thinking of using thousands of rounds of ammunition in self-defense situations or in, or in situations where your life will be at risk, how is it possible that you don't envision the possibility of you getting shot? That means knowing how to patch up a wound, having the uh, first aid material to do so, and also, in its common sense, having uh, what could possibly save your life and what has been saving police officers' lives for, for many years now, body armor, right? If there's three things that you will have for, for home defense, it's your handgun, which, as I said before, everyone, most people will agree on that, and having a firearm, having a flashlight to find your way around, uh, see what's, uh, what's moving around there, uh, even uh, have a, a, a position of strength, while blinding someone if, if the case presents itself that way and body armor right so number one reason for owning body armor would be home defense one home defense right this is number one reason for owning body armor that is the thing that is most likely to happen and again, here come the, guy, come the guys that say, well, I have a, a handgun for home defense, or I have a rifle, or I have a, a firearm of some sort for home defense. I don't need body armor. <laughs> How is it possible that you know exactly what's going to be happening? How is it possible that you see, you see the possibility of you needing a firearm for lethal force in a self-defense situation, and you don't grasp the possibility of that guy who broke into your house having a firearm and shooting back at you, all right? May happen, may not, just as well as a home invasion may or may not occur to you. Now, the thing is, as things keep getting worse, as we all know, uh, everywhere, these things are more likely to happen. And the gap of how much you're able to screw up and still make it is, is becoming smaller. This is something that I make reference to all the time when, when I talk about a home in Argentina, how, how you are not allowed to make many of the mistakes that you guys do in US because it's a, the crime problem is, is so big that if you are the guy that messed up, someone will notice and someone will hit you, all right? If, if you're the guy that doesn't think about these things, you may be the guy that ends up, ends up getting shot during a home invasion. And for everyone that scared away a, a, a home intruder with, with a kid's toy, with an with a, with a air pellet gun, with a, a 22 Derringer, there's another guy that died because he chose the wrong a type of, of tool for the job, the wrong weapon. He didn't have enough information, legally speaking, about how to do things properly and ended up in jail because of that. Or ended up dead in a, in a shootout with bad guys. Okay. How is it that you use this stuff? Just like you pick your gun and just how you pick your flashlight when you hear something go bump in the night, 
you also put on your body armor and the more you practice it the faster you become at it will you always have time well again it's so broad the spectrum of possibilities I mean there's people that wake up with a gun pointed at their faces because they fail to secure their home well enough and they wake up with someone literally pointing a gun in their face so that's that's it you're they have the drop on you and anything that you're gonna be doing is a, a last desperate resort just as there's people that hear something go bump in the night they, they hear someone trying to force out a door a window and you have a few seconds now in those few seconds you the first thing you're gonna be picking up of course is your firearm but also if you have a couple more, more seconds to spare you're gonna be picking up your flashlight and your body armor as well it's gonna be giving you such a greater chance of survival in case of things going the wrong way that there's really no reason for not owning one all right you own a firearm the second thing you should be buying is body armor as well all right maybe not the first thing you buy okay if you are lucky enough to be in a place where you can legally own firearms first thing you should be getting yourself is, is your firearm for self-defense as soon as you get that done start looking for body armor because it's crazy to think that you're going to be the only one doing the shooting okay that only works out guys again hollywood the only place where people shoot at each other and the good guys never get hit that's hollywood <laughs> in the rest of in real world stuff is uh, the odds are pretty much high that in a in a gunfight you are going to be getting hit as well maybe in your hands maybe you survive maybe you don't actually you have pretty good possibilities of surviving getting shot if you look at the actual statistics but that number goes up a lot when you have body armor all right so back recapping a little bit you have your firearm you have your flashlight if you have those seconds to spare you put on your body armor all right and we're going to be talking and i'm going to be showing you mine here in a second two you have the possibility of this happening in your house you also have the possibility of, of violent encounters outside, okay? So number two is gonna be self-defense. This is what I did myself, okay? This is what I do. If there is something that I hear going bump in the night and I saw the possibility of, of me needing my, my, my handgun, if I was picking up my handgun, I would also put on my body armor as well. If nothing happens, like it is 99% of the time you hear something and it's nothing, because that's usually how it goes, there's also that 1% where it's actually something, okay? That something may be the cat, maybe your kid who came back home late and you didn't realize or went out to pick up a glass of water or whatever, so training and trigger control is extremely important. It's not about shooting anything that moves, it's about identifying your target as well. That's the way in which you avoid so many of those tragedies where people end up uh, shooting someone they're not intended to do so because they didn't have the proper training. They, just, they are just scared, they pick a gun that they haven't received training so as to use it, or maybe they receive the wrong kind of training. If your training involves shooting at everything that you have in front of you, that's the wrong kind of training. You really need some, some form of training where identification is involved as well because that's one of the most likely scenarios. One of the most likely scenarios is you pulling a gun on someone that you are not gonna be shooting because it's either not the right uh, choice to make at that moment or even because it's uh, the wrong call entirely to even be drawing on that person uh, to begin with. Someone walking into your house unexpected, your neighbor has a key and there's so many possibilities. You really have to be able to control that sort of thing in, in that moment. What is it, the, the possibility here in terms of self-defense outside of your house? Well, a couple of scenarios that I can relate to and I have done myself, for example, when, when picking up money from, from the bank in places like Argentina where it's very common what is called the salideras bancarias. Salideras bancarias is basically robberies uh, involving you going to the bank and someone tipping off and giving off information of that, that operation. Usually it's someone within the bank itself. This happens very often. Sometimes it's uh, what, what we call in Argentina motochorros, which is basically thieves in, in motorcycles uh, going, going around and looking who's leaving the bank, who seems to have money and such. That's, oh, it's one of the high risk
high risk moments which you should be preparing for okay that would be a moment where extra measures of security would be involved in that case you have your firearm also you put on your body armor because you know that that precise uh, moment is pretty dangerous another example uh, of when i had used body armor for um, for self-defense for the possibility uh, of self-defense when when selling a, a vehicle for example in a dangerous place like argentina yeah it is a very good idea to be armed and to have body armor as well i was selling one of uh, one of my cars a few years ago i had my, my glock pistol and i had concealed body armor as well yeah, the two guys that came to take a look at the vehicle uh, i just made sure that being very nice and all because you don't want to uh, you don't want to alert them of any of this but uh, being very nice and all I always made sure I had a respectable distance from them while showing them the vehicle uh, made sure that none of them was flanking me you know if, if one of the guys if I'm looking forward and one of the guys tries to walk behind me I would just step back so as to always keep them both within my line of vision okay that's basic basic uh, tactics and common sense you know if you have two guys you always move so as to keeping them within within your line uh, of sight that also gives you a time to react if they do any anything anything stupid all right and as i was reading just yesterday was it a guy in argentina got killed during this exact same situation he was he was selling his vehicle an old car ford falcon 1984 guys so i'm not talking about someone super rich or anything just an ordinary dude actually kind of lower middle class he showed his vehicle to uh, to a potential buyer a couple of times uh, so there's not he, it's not just a, a random encounter he, he saw these people one two i think it wasn't the third time when they were supposedly going to be closing the deal that they kill him they kill him and threw it through his body in in the gutter in the backyard something like that anyway he's dead but that's the kind of, th of thing that you have to consider as a high risk moment okay if you are of course transporting a uh, cash for payments in your company as things start getting worse and this will depend of course a lot in where you live if, if you live in venezuela this isn't anything new you already know <laughs> all this stuff and you you prepare for it if you have a, any ounce of common sense now if you are someone that lives in a first world country if you live uh, in us which is little by little getting more and more dangerous and many of these things creeping into daily life over there uh, this is something that you may want to be paying attention to okay other scenarios where maybe you have to go to a, a bad part uh, of town because you don't have any any uh, any other choice of course first of all you avoid going to dangerous places now if you cannot avoid going to a potentially dangerous place you do want to be wearing your body armor all right so it's not as if you're wearing it all day long because that's not 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 practical and it's uh, it's not as reasonable but owning the body armor for home defense and for potentially risky situations that does make a lot of sense to me and that's more than enough reason for owning it all right and again you see it on i see it on, on the youtube videos guys uh, that, that know their stuff uh, with maybe in military training and they think of well when they when it's that without rule of law situation because it goes back to what they know the the military thing the the combat uh, environment now i'm talking about things that affect any guy civilian in his normal ordinary life and there are still many reasons to ask to own body armor finally the last one training all right you have to own body armor if you're going to be doing any kind of firearms training all right maybe if you only take a, a basic self-defense class and that's i don't know you're, you're a guy or a lady that doesn't want to have anything to do with firearms but basically understands the importance of owning one so you buy a revolver take a basic self-defense uh, shooting class and safe handling class and that's it maybe that's not for you now if you're going to be doing more training if you're going to be doing more advanced firearms training for self-defense and combat you do need body armor okay i don't know who you are where you are and who you are training with if you are counting and if you are putting your life in the hands of people that you barely know as it happens in in, in the training environment you are stupid and you have greater problems than this okay you just don't know who the guy next to you is many times you go to a class 
you you don't know anyone at all as you keep going you start knowing the guys a little bit better your faces become more familiar you see who guys are good and such now remember two important things no matter how good you are you can always make a mistake so that goes for yourself and the guy next to you and second sometimes you show up in in, in, in these classes and there's someone that you you're seeing for the first time in your life you don't know the level of training of that guy you don't know if, if you can count on him or not I don't count on anyone, <laughs> right? I don't, I don't care how great you are shooting. I just don't trust my life uh, to you in that way. I just don't know if you, when you're drawing, I, I know some of the best shooters in the planet that have actually had uh, accidental discharges and actually injured others and themselves, even, kill others, uh, even killed other people uh, by accident. It's always a possibility and it's stupid not to have body armor when doing that. It's an environment that you're controlling, so you have the option of taking it with you. It's stupid not to have it with you. It's like doing boxing and not wearing a mouth piece because you're, you're counting on never getting punched in the mouth. Maybe that's a little bit too extreme, but it's, it's actually a good comparison. You know that there's a possibility of that happening. Why shouldn't you prepare accordingly? It goes against any and all bones in your body related to preparedness and survival. An environment that you control by all means yes so these are, are just three excellent reasons why anyone that already owns a firearm why anyone that uh, considers the possibility of, of lethal force in self-defense should own body armor I think it was as clear as I could possibly put it now let's go to the possibilities I'm not going to be getting into the different uh, ratings and such basically you have level 2 level 2a it's going to be good enough for uh, for for pistols, uh, if you can go for level uh, 3A, you know l level 3 would include a uh, rifle place. If I'm remembering uh, correctly, level 2A is mi basically the minimum. Level 2A, I believe it was a little bit better, but uh, basically we're gonna be gonna, you're gonna be moving up around those uh, those ranges. Talking about soft uh, panels, usually Kevlar, and should you go with concealed body armor or exterior? I own both. I had both of them. The one that I ended up using, and I suppose I used both of them almost equally. Whenever something went bumped in the night, I had my um, outside um, non-concealable body armor, and that's what I put on because it's a bit thicker than material and such. When I had a little bit more time for preparing, for example, when selling a vehicle, when going to dangerous places, when going to the bank with large amounts of cash, I would use the concealable body armor. You know, it does not. None of this stops uh, rifle rounds, of course, and um, that's something that's often criticized. Oh, but it's not going to be stopping rifle rounds. Well, the chances of you getting shot with a rifle as a civilian and on normal and not so normal violent, uh, violent environments is actually kind of kind of low the most likely firearm to be used by a criminal because of the same reasons by which you should be carrying it yourself is that it's concealable okay that is the one that's most likely to be used so if it covers uh, if it covers uh, handguns that's that's great okay so in my opinion have both have a concealable and and um, exterior use body armor if you only have to use if you only have to own one then I would incline in most cases to concealable body armor now when because it covers the both uh, both possibilities it covers it can be used concealed or not so if you only have to go for one concealable in my opinion is is slightly a better idea when I left Argentina one of the things that I took with me was body armor I had my two vests the concealable one and a, a military issue surplus one I ended up bringing the military surplus issue one because it is in better shape it was much uh, much newer in spite of being surplus wasn't as old as the other one which still stopped uh, rounds guys uh, about body armor uh, the expiring date if the if the panels the Kevlar is in good condition flexible and it's not showing a considerable uh, deterioration it's gonna still stop uh, those those rounds there's been plenty of of testing and you can see that online uh, unless uh, it's very very old and visibly has some um, deterioration to the fibers of the Kevlar you have to open them up and see it for yourself in, in general Kevlar especially does hold very well beyond the supposedly expiration date all right so so keep that in mind 
so I left my, my concealable body armor and actually it went to one of my, my good friends in, in Argentina and he was extremely grateful for it. He was a, a like-minded person to put it some way and you know it's one of those things that you know he didn't have a body armor vest himself I gave him that one and he was he was so grateful for it because he sees the same things that I do and and thinks the same way so uh, I ended up bringing this one let me show it to you guys in a second uh, military issue surplus it's point blank level 3a all right it's pretty uh, pretty well pretty nice uh, construction the cheapest way to get body armor guys honestly go on eBay and wait for uh, for a good auction uh, if you're tight on I mean if you have the cash for it just go anywhere and, and buy whatever it is that you like now if you're on a very tight budget and you still understand what I'm talking about and see why it's important go on eBay have enough patience and uh, do the the auction thing and eventually you can have one of these I think I paid a hundred bucks for for that you cannot beat a, a good point-blank vest for for roughly a hundred bucks, right? Uh, especially not one in, in overall very good condition. It has all all the molly things uh, for uh, for different for having your maybe you will put in your uh, a, a, ma a magazine um, carrier for a couple of pistol mags, a, uh, a flashlight holder. Uh, I wouldn't load it up like crazy because uh, I think it's better to keep it light, fast, and, and, and comfortable for moving around in a hurry. So just keep it to what you you really need. In my in my opinion, it would be maybe uh, especially if you're setting it up for for home defense, maybe uh, a holster, a couple of spare mags, and flashlight. And you whenever you hear something going bump in the night, you put on your vest and you have all three things on you immediately all right even if you're butt naked you put this on and you will have your pistol your magazines and your flashlight right of course if if you have your flashlight with a mounted dedicated tactical light in the pistol itself it is better i would still put uh, a hand a, a separate uh, flashlight as well because again there's a possibility of something going bump in the night and it's not something dangerous and you don't want to be uh, lighting up your your five-year-old with, with your firearm because you don't have actually a flashlight in your hand as well so i would keep that uh, in there too Spe and also as a spare so good reasons to have them both uh, for training this is what i use in, in argentina for for training all right and again as I said before, if not go back, very important to have this sort of thing for training because you just don't know when an accident is going to be happening. You shooting yourself, someone else shooting, shooting you by accident. This is going to be improving your odds. Finally, one of the things I found it, uh, to be actually uh, useful during some of the more advanced uh, trainings, especially it was uh, the dynamic entry training where we worked in groups with uh, several guys working in a team. Uh, there were uh, some... Uh, some um, some drills where you're walking in the line and there's uh, you're the point man and generally in, in many in many cases the guy the guy behind you the the, the guy next to you uh, following the guy in, uh, next to you in line will be holding you like this okay will be holding you like this uh, this is important well kind of difficult to explain very quickly now but the thing is uh, there's cases in which you are going to be kneels and he's going to be standing up with his gun pointed forward he's going to be uh, holding you down for your own security and he's going to be the one picking you up when it's safe for you to get up so this is pretty important for training as well it's not just oh i'm wounded and you're being dragged out of the combat <laughs> of the war zone no uh, even for training for some of the more advanced training involved uh, groups this is a pretty handy to have a handle here for for grabbing uh, the, the point man the guy the guy in front of you okay and keeping him safe and giving him directions and all that stuff <laughs> so guys that's basically it kind of longer video but in my opinion important for you guys to watch take care remember to subscribe if you're liking what you're watching take care have a great day and see you on our next video